I'm Robin Higgins, and this is The Implications of Oligonucleotide Synthesis. All right, so what are oligonucleotides? Well, they're basically short, one-stranded, as opposed to double-stranded, segments of DNA or RNA. And through biochemistry, you can make your own sequence. So, of course, uh, in every cell and in different parts of li living organisms, there's DNA and RNA, and it's usually very, very long. Um, and scientists have now the capability to create their own uh, DNA or RNA to replicate it or to create their own. And so the implications of this research are basically that we can kind of start to explore uh, the effect that DNA changes and RNA changes have on different uh, structures. And so, I mean, right now, it, it's, it's not you know, evil or anything. We aren't doing it in labs to the point where we would change how a human being is or anything you know, scary like that. It's primarily really used by research scientists um, in bacteria. Or on very, very low levels to kind of see what happens with different folds and different combinations of these uh, bases. So uh, on the medical side, uh, other types of chemistry, as well as being able to, as well as being able to synthetically uh, make these guys, uh, have actually led to some cures. So uh, genetic engineering or the synthesis had led to uh, making the human growth hormone. synthetically or insulin synthetically. Uh, which of course helps diabetic people. And so basically uh, this type of biochemistry has thousands of applications which are being worked on, uh, but nothing that you'd probably see yet in your everyday life. I'm Robin Higgins and this is The Implications of Oligonucleotide Synthesis. Oh,